And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Spies and Lies. And when I first saw the copy for this, it basically said that it was a head-to-head -head deduction game and stuff, and it said set in the world of Stratego. And it even says it here in the front, a Stratego story. Well, I love Stratego. It's one of the games that changed my life. I played Stratego a lot when I was a kid. I did not think of it as a universe, though. <laughs> I thought Stratego was set in the... I don't know, the, the Napoleonic Wars, that's what it feels like. The pictures and stuff have always looked that way. But all right, you know, and also a two-player try to guess what the other person has. That's what Stratego is anyway. This is a card game. Let me show you. Each player has 10 soldier cards that are numbered 1 through 10, each with a special ability. You are going to be using these to be getting intelligence points over the course of the game. Whenever you get, let's say I'm here and I got 5 intelligence points, I get 1, 2, 3, I stop, and I get to move this one space towards my opponent base and then it resets to 0. If at any point you get the double agent into your opponent's base, you win the game. Otherwise, after 3 rounds, whoever has it closer to their opponent's base is the winner. In each round, players are going to be losing a random card. At the beginning of the game, it's just one of your ten cards. But after, in rounds two and three, it will be one of the four cards you play. Players will then pick any four cards they want, look at these cards, and they're going to arrange them in front of themselves in ascending order. So this is six, seven, eight, nine, but it doesn't have to be that way. If the red player could play one, two, five, ten. So one, two, five, ten. Then the players could take turns back and forth. And what you'll do is you, let's say the red players guess will guess this number. But before they do that, they have some information. These intelligence cards, there's two each. There's two one, two, three, fours, two, four, five, six, sevens, and two seven, eight, nine, tens. So each you're gonna have one of these out of the game, and then each round you'll reveal one. So let's say I reveal seven, eight, nine, ten. Each player must put a token on the numbers that match that. So here, for example, I played six, seven, eight, and nine. So boom, boom, boom. And here we did one, two, five, and ten. Well, I'm only going to be putting a token on the very last one. So you've given your opponent some information. So then they'll take turns, and they'll, I'm going to guess this card here. So it's your first card. I'll guess it. It's a three. It is not a three. But every time you guess correctly, you get two deception points. And so remember, you know, when you get to ten, you get to move this token, the double agent token, one space. So players are trying to identify correctly. Not only that, if I guess correctly, my opponent cannot use their card. If I guess incorrectly, they get to use the card. And each of these cards is going to do something different. If I activate my one, I'm going to get one deception point. I also get one of these intelligence tokens uh, of my color. And when I do that, I'm able to place this on a token in the future before my opponent's guess and kind of double the value of it. It's kind of a double down thing. Also, if I play my one, my opponent's 10, if they played it, doesn't work. The two says from now on for the rest of this round, all your guesses, if you're correct, you get an extra two points. The three takes out your opponent's seven, the bomb, and gives you three deception points. Four is unique because, remember I said you have to put the cards in ascending order? You don't have to. You can put the four anywhere you want. And so that is just there to confuse your opponents. Also, it gives you four deception points. The five doesn't give you any deception points at all, but lets you simply move this token one space in the middle. The six lets you use a card that's already been exhausted. The seven is a bomb and gives you, lets you, uh, it blows up your opponent's next card. They can't use it. The eight gives you eight deception points, but unlike the rest of the cards, if I'm here, for example, got eight deception points, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They carry over. Normally, when you get to ten, you stop and reset. The nine doesn't give you any points, but lets you move this token two spots. And the ten 
gives you either 10 points or you can add five to yourself and subtract five from your opponent. So that's basically it. You're just taking turns back and forth. You're going to do this three rounds. At the end of each round, of the four cards you played, one of them is randomly discarded, so you only ever have nine to pick from, and a new one of these will be turned over, giving some more information. And that's how you play. Card quality in the game is okay, but I really like the art. You know, I like the fact that the two ones look different, two, three, four, five. You know, they just have a different feel to them, a different look. You know, there's some similarities here. Uh, the three for the blue and the three for the red, they look similar, but they have different facial expressions on them. The board itself, you have those. These are some of the classic Stratego type pieces that are used in some of the games where you can't really see it unless you're looking at them straight on. You know, it's not an amazing production, but it's fine. Now, this is a faster version of Stratego, but you can see there's the same kind of things. You still have the one character that takes out a bomb. You still have the one that takes out the ten. You still have the bomb, which blows up your opponent and they can't do something. So there's a lot of similarities, and I can see why it's set in the Stratego universe. That being said, it's a very different game. It is simply a guessing game. I need to guess what card you have. I have some reasonable ways to figure it out. If it's the first card, it was, it's a one. It can't be, for example, a 10, 9, or 8, probably in that first card, because you wouldn't be able to put them in order. Except there is the four. That messes everything up a little bit, but still. And you have to put those tokens on the card, so that gives me a little bit more information. So I have a reasonable guess. But after that reasonable guess, it then turns into... The game of wine, the game of wits, because I'll say, well, obviously, I, he knows I'm going to play a 10, and so they're going to play a 1, but they know that I know they would play the 1, therefore, and I, therefore, I cannot choose the wine that is in front of me. And that's exactly what this game is, and <laughs> I find that so delicious. I really like it because the each of the special abilities is very distinct. The 8 is great, the 10 is great, the higher numbers are better than the lower numbers, but... If you play that two, for example, and I guess all yours correctly, I just got a VUKU amount of points, which lets me move that token closer to your side. Now, I have yet to see a game where the double agent has hit the, the flag. I'm sure it's possible. It's always the game has ended with it closer to one side of the board, but that threat is there. And just the guessing what the other person did and anticipating their guess and playing differently and anticipating that they're going to anticipate your guess and play differently. Therefore, I still picked the original thing because I knew you would double anticipate back. Confused yet? I've just got getting started. Anyhow, I really like Spies and Lies. This is the kind of game that I find to be amusing. There's not a lot of, uh, it's a small design space, but it's done really well. And just some of the things about flipping the cards over, one random card being out of your hand. There's no set strategies. This, they did a, a fantastic job at bringing the Stratego flavor into a shorter card game. Now, there's a game, Heron Zeus or Thunder and Lightning, which I already said was Stratego the card game. That's still correct, right? That's Stratego the card game. This is Stratego another card game. It's not Stratego. But it gives you some of the same feelings to the point where if you like Stratego, you might like this. Um, but if you like outthinking your opponent and you want to play a somewhat more complicated game of rock, paper, scissors, this one is fantastic. I was really surprised and found this one to be very enjoyable. That's Spies and Lies. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent.